Well, as I was saying about Rachel, uh, what can one say? Uh, I just want to repeat one thing uh, that Richard said a moment ago. <clears throat> Rachel was alone. I mean, uh, truly alone in the start of this in, with her wonderful lawyer who, who worked so hard with her, not, not me, a, a lawyer, lawyer who worked terribly, terribly hard uh, with her, but she was in the main and in terms of legislation alone. I saw her when she was, uh, pr she was pressuring the New York State Legislature. Do you know how dysfunctional the New York State <laughs> Legislature did? I, I mean, can you imagine? They voted unanimously. Unanimously. They don't speak to each other. It's, believe me, it's worse than here. Uh, and she caused that to come into being. Uh, so, as Jim Wolsey said, as Richard Perla said, thank you. Uh, I want to give you just two examples, very current ones, <coughs> of why legislation like this is needed. And in, in one minor case, no case at all, uh, but no case at all because of the legislation. Uh, uh, I had a call from my son, Dan Abrams, who, among other things, is the owner of various web properties. These are startups. These are small web properties, uh, some of them now drawing over a million people a month. Uh, but one particular one made critical reference to a Scottish newspaper for its coverage of some celebrity. They received a lawyer's letter from Scotland. Internet, same theory as you identified earlier. It appeared here in Scotland, we have lost reputation in Glasgow because a small American website had published something critical of their coverage. And uh, I represent my son. Uh, that was the first time I had a chance to say, uh, this is Floyd Abrams, I represent Gossip Cop. <laughs> but if you're interested in that sort of stuff, uh, uh, in any event, the fact that I was able to tell him that, look, at the end of the day, you really must understand, they have no assets in Scotland. They have no assets in Europe. You cannot do anything with respect to this American publication, which, in effect, uh, put on the internet material for Americans to read, in, in this particular case, uh, about a minor matter. Uh, you can't enforce it here. Why are we going through this? And they stopped. It ended. No case, nothing to write about in the newspapers. Uh, it ended because this legislation had just passed. And a lawyer could say, don't bother. Let me give you one other example. Uh, which I'm involved with, so you can discount, if you must, uh, what I say. The former head of the SEC was asked by the SEC to be a sort of monitor, to write a report on the activities uh, of an American company, to make an investigation. There had been charges of corruption. Uh, he wrote the report. He was uh, not only appointed by the SEC, but a federal judge in a criminal case uh, brought against the uh, leader of the uh, company, the CEO of the company and chief stockholder, uh, appointed as well and ordered that the report, report done for the SEC, be filed in court. And so it was in Chicago that the, the defendant uh, wound up going to jail, wound up uh, getting out of jail because of a Supreme Court decision. Uh, and uh, there's a lawsuit now in Canada. Great country, not an unfree country, but a country that does not have American libel law or anything like American First Amendment law. So 
the Canadian citizen brings a libel suit in Canada against the American former head of the commission, appointed by the commission, uh, and uh, 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 whose report has been ordered filed by a judge in Chicago, federal judge in Chicago, and winds up now in a foreign jurisdiction uh, having to make a tactical decision and the like about whether to defend, not to defend, etc., cetera, uh, etc. Cetera. Uh, this legislation at least gives him the choice of appearing uh, or not. Uh, it at least gives him the opportunity to say uh, or to decide that he would rather run the risk of a default judgment, just as Rachel had a default judgment, um, and basically say, you know, try to enforce it here. That's where I am. This is where I come from. This is where I live. This is my citizenship. This is my country. And this is the country uh, of the Speech Act. So a lot has changed already as a result of the Speech Act. And a lot of things will happen as a result of it, which won't be reported because there will be no single newsworthy event. There will be, I hope and think, fewer problems. There will still be problems in this area. And it may be, as various senators and congressmen who supported this legislation uh, uh, observed, it may be that there's a need to go farther down the road than Congress went so far. But they went a real distance. They did something very serious. Uh, and they did something that we can all, in a genuinely, how rare it is to say that, in a genuinely bipartisan way, say that this was a fine, good, uh, and important thing that Congress has done. So to you, Rachel, a glass, and to the Congress, from all of us, a glass raised. Thank you.